Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Deep Cuts on Classic Albums. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today, we are going to look at a landmark debut album from October 1973, the self-titled debut release from Montrose. Of course, this is the band fronted by the late great guitar hero Ronnie Montrose, you know, fresh off of stints playing with uh, the Edgar Winter group as well as uh, Van Morrison. He decided to put together his own band and in the process of doing so, came up with a classic album that some people cite as the first American heavy metal album. Debatable, right? Is the first, but a great album. Uh, filled with songs, each one is so memorable, killer guitar work, and the introduction basically of a guy named Sammy Hagar on vocals, who was basically unknown at the time, who would later catapult what he did on two albums with Montrose, to a solo career, to a career singing for Van Halen, uh, you know, all, we know what Sammy's done since then, but this is a landmark album that had, you know, as far as like where it appeared on the charts when it came out, I believe uh, was it number one. This the, the album itself on the Billboard Top 200 only rose to number 133. So it wasn't like when it first was released it was like a major major seller, but it continually sold very strong throughout time. That right now it is it's been labeled as a platinum seller with over one million units sold since it was first released in '73. Pretty damn good, right? But a highly influential album that most people cite as one of the best, like U.S. hard rock or metal albums released in the '70s. So pretty ahead of its time for 1973. You know, this is uh, pretty heavy stuff. So produced by Ted Templeman, who obviously we know did lots of great things afterwards, uh, most notably with Van Halen. But uh, so, you know, we got a couple. Well, who's on the album, first of all? So we got, so that's the guys. So we got Ronnie on guitar, Sammy on vocals, okay, Bill Church on bass, and of course, Denny Carmasi on drums, very good drummer. So a couple notable FM radio staples throughout the decades from this album. But, you know, we want to look at all the individual tracks here, uh, specifically the deep cuts. So, you know, the Rock the Nation is the first tune on the album, which was played quite a bit on FM radio. For most people, probably the one or either their number one or number two favorite song on here. A very, very good song. Heavy, driving guitar riff. Great vocal from Sammy Hagar. I mean, Sammy... Arguably, this is Sammy's best vocal performance ever, right? It, or it's up there. Definitely up there. Uh, love Rock the Nation. It's got a great riff. Uh, Bad Motor Scooter. It's Bad Motor Scooter, not Bad Motor Scooter. Bad Motor Scooter is the other really notable... Uh, there's a couple of them, actually. But one of the other probably top two notable tracks on here. A just great... Gotta love the, the riff on there, right? He's got the motorcycle thing going on and... Uh, the rhythms are fast and frenetic. It's got a really, really solid vocal from Sammy. And it's a real catchy tune. Okay, real good headbanger. But how about Space Station number five? Kind of moody, psychedelic at the outset, right? Then, of course, comes in that chugging riff. Uh, it becomes, you know, like a real heavy boogie machine. Gotta love bad uh, uh, space station number five. Bad, I got bad motor scooter on the brain. Uh, from there, what else we got here? Uh, I don't want it. How about that for like a heavy, heavy blues rocker? You know, Ronnie's guitar work on this album is really understated, but meaty and metallic. You know, this is not a uh, there's not a ton of long solos on here. The solos are short and concise. It's more about the effective riffing and the tone. Ronnie's Les Paul tone on here throughout this entire album is just killer. And that is just a really, really good example of just some of the great guitar work that he does throughout this entire album. But another great uh, Hagar vocal on that. Uh, over on side two of the LP, we've got, it kicks off with Good Rockin' Tonight, which is, you know, the, the Montrose band still kind of doing that metallic thing, but it's a boogie tune. It's like, you know, status quo on steroids. Uh, thick layers of guitars and the, the rhythms are just, the bass and the drums are just, you know, popping all over the place. A really, really fun, fun tune to kick off side two of the LP. Uh, then, of course, it goes into Rock Candy, which probably my personal favorite tune on the album. You're Rock Candy, babe. You're hot, sweet, and sticky, right? Uh, I mean, how about that? 
barnstorming riff at the beginning of that song. You know? Dun, 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 dun. Awesome. Just great, great stuff. Uh, what else we got here? One thing on my mind. Gotta love that kind of phased riff at the beginning. You know, Ronnie using some effects there. Uh, another really, really good tune. Again, it's kind of got that little bit of boogie feel to it, I think. Another good, you know, couple, couple of tunes on here have that kind of heavy blues rock slash boogie type thing going. But again, kicked up a notch from what we knew of as boogie before. Then it's not your cactus boogie, your status quo boogie, right? This was some seriously metallic stuff that these guys were doing here. And then the last tune, uh, another real kind of early metal rocker with great Hagar vocals and some wicked slide guitar is uh, Make It Last. Uh, and I think Sammy's vocal on that track kind of predates some of the really cool melodic stuff he would do with Van Halen uh, starting in the early mid-80s. Uh, and even on some of his solo albums as well. He just, Sammy's just such a great singer and just an ultimate cool guy. I think he was a perfect front man for this band. And it's just a shame it didn't last much longer than the two albums, right? So I think it was, what, the, the debut album, they did some... They did tours, obviously. They did the uh, the second album, and then before you blinked, Sammy was gone, off on a solo career, and you know Montrose then had this whole revolving door of of members over the course of the next couple albums. But you know, as far as like debuts from the '70s, this is up there. You know, most people talk about the you know the top couple hard rock debuts of the '70s, and you know usually Boston's come up near the top of that any list. And rightfully so, but you you gotta include Montrose's debut up there too. Uh, it's that good. Just, just not a weak moment on here. Every track is great. Uh, there's some nice flavors on here. You know, uh, not every song is exactly the same stylistically speaking, but uh, just killer, killer. Les Paul guitar crunching on here. Gotta love it. I mean, you know, Ronnie Montrose if he never did another thing after this would still be a Hall of Fame guitar hero based on what he did here. But, of course, we know he had contributed a lot to rock and roll over the years. So, uh, yeah, 1973 self-titled debut from Montrose. A lot of great deep cuts on here. Uh, it would be interesting to see if we have any folks on here who really don't know this album. Well, I'm sure everybody does, but uh, it, it's just top to bottom. Uh, a couple of stray hits on here, but for the most part, they're all strong. Entire album is just top to bottom spectacular. So make sure you visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on the Mighty YouTube as often as possible. We got more top 10 songs, deep cuts on classic albums, best to worst albums. I got a new product showcase coming up this weekend. I uh, got a questions and answers show coming up this weekend. I might squeeze another top 10 songs in this weekend. I know I, I want to do a White Snake one, I want to do a UFO one. I want to do a Kiss one. Uh, a couple of you asked for Steely Dan. I want to do one of those. I, I, my list is immense. Uh, Michael Schenker Group, which is going to be kind of difficult because he's had the Michael Schenker Group, the Macaulay Schenker Group, um, Temple of Rock, Michael Schenker Fest. I may just lump them all together. We know most of the top are going to come from those first three albums, and but whatever. Uh, so anyway, till next time, guys. We'll see you, and thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.